Seated, please. This morning, we're going to use another fellowship song. Many of us are familiar with Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Over this side, we'll sing, Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Over here, we'll sing. Over here. Praise God. Let's go now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise God. Oli, oli, la. Praise God, be thankful unto Him. Praise God and bless His holy name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Know ye that the Lord he is good. Praise God, it is as hath made us. Praise God, and not we ourselves. Praise God. we are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Praise God. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, praise God. Let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let the church say glory, hallelujah. Are you happy to be alive today? If you're happy to be alive, just wave your hands and say thank you, Jesus. If you're happy to be in the presence of the Lord, won't you just say to your neighbor, neighbor, I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. Today, it's a wonderful day to be alive. I like the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. It's a wonderful privilege to be in the house of the Lord. We want to welcome all those persons who are watching via the internet. www.mandevillesta.org Whether it's night for you or morning or whatever time it is, happy Sabbath and welcome to 13A Caledonia Road, Mandeville, Manchester, Jamaica, West Indies. We're happy to be alive today. God has been good. This morning, I want to extend congratulations to all those persons who sat their GSAT and they were successful. Successful. Uh, week before last, I should have done it, but it slipped me. And last week, we had the rain, so it could not have been done. Can I see all those of our young persons who were successful in their GSAT exams? Can I ask you all to stand? Amen. Oh, they're upstairs. Amen. Congratulations, and may God continue to bless you. Also today, I'm told that one of our own, one of our hardworking young men, that's Brother Chaz Brown, uh, he's presently at Northern Caribbean University, where he's taking, where he is almost a graduate of the Victor Dixon High School. So come tomorrow, he would have graduated from the noble Victor Dixon High School. We want to extend sincere congratulations to Chaz on this achievement. Can I hear you say amen for him? Amen. The month of June is almost finished. This is my month, and wonderful people are born in June. Can I ask, ask all those persons who celebrated throughout the course of this week or are celebrating their birthdays to stand or your wedding anniversaries. Amen. Can I hear you say amen for them? Amen. amen. The Gemini, strong and courageous. Brother Wilton, let's get that birthday anniversary thing going. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. May God bless you all as you continue to live for him. This afternoon, friends, at 3.30, one of the greatest events will take place in the town of Mandeville. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about World Cup cricket nor am I talking about World Cup football. I'm talking about the grand march that has been initiated by this church. Come this afternoon, Brother Wilton, rain or shine, and God will hold up the rain for us. We will be marching in the town of Mandeville. We will be telling men, women, boys and girls that Jesus Christ is still the answer. We want criminal elements to understand that there is a better way. They need to put down their guns and take up their Bibles and follow Jesus Christ. We will culminate in the park with a wonderful AY program. And so we're asking everyone to come out. Bring out brother, Barry, sister, Sally, uncle, Larry. Tell them do not tarry. 
or perhaps they will be sorry. Let us see you all at 3.30. In the same breath, Sister Jessica is asking, Sister Jessica Grant is asking all Pathfinders to meet with her at 3.30 this afternoon. We will be taking the town of Mandeville by storm in the name of Jesus. Because we believe that God still sits high and he looks down low. Next week, Sabbath friends, we'll be having our communion service. We should have had it last week, but we, had, we would have postponed it anyway, and the rain came, so it could not have been held. So we'll be having our communion service next week, Sabbath. That's Sabbath, July 1, 2017. And you know how we do it here. Whenever there's communion, we don't visit other churches. We don't go anywhere else. All roads lead to Mandeville next week for our wonderful communion service. The Sunday evening, that's Sunday, July 2, we'll be having a baptismal service here at about 7. Friends, we believe that there are souls who need to be rescued by the blood of Jesus Christ. And every time we baptize someone, the devil's kingdom is dealt a serious blow. So we're having our baptismal service next week, Sunday evening. Those persons who are making up their minds, we pray that the Holy Spirit will convict you because Jesus is the only answer. People will fail, but Jesus never fails. All our visiting friends who are here, there are some connection cards. We want you to get these cards. Our hardworking ushers are nearby. They will ensure that these cards are delivered to you when you would have received them, we're asking you kindly to fill out these cards. These cards will capture your names, your addresses, your phone numbers, and other important information. When you would have finished, please submit them to the ushers. And there are some gifts that await you at the end of this process. My brothers and sisters, as I close, this morning I just want to say to you, God continues to be a wonderful God. Despite all the challenges and the problems that we face, God is still alive. The story is told of a man who was an atheist. He claimed that there was no God. And he openly spoke negatively about God. One day, his son was playing around the home. And the son found a bottle of pesticide, something like that, and he drank it. And within a few minutes, he was dying. They rushed him to the hospital. And the doctors tried their best. His eyes were turning over. They gave up on him. And a Christian gentleman walked in. And the Christian gentleman said to him, have you tried Jesus? He said, I don't believe in God. There is no God. The Christian gentleman held on to the little boy's hand. And he prayed for him. The boy began to move. And within a few hours, he was back to normal. The atheist couldn't believe. And he fell on his knees and he said, God, I want to say sorry for all the negative things I've said about you because there really is a God. That man became a Christian and today he is worshiping God because God saved his child. I want to let you know today that our God still lives. Irrespective of your challenges and your circumstances, take these things to God. One of my favorite preachers said, whenever you have a problem, don't go, to the prob don't go to God and say, I have a big problem. Go to the problem and say, I have a big God. Whatever your problems are, go to God and say, go to your problems and say, I have a big God. God bless you. The melody of praise is the atmosphere of heaven. And when heaven comes in touch with the earth, there is music and song, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. May I invite the church to stand, please? Do not worry about the wicked. Do not envy those who do wrong. Quick as the grass, they wither. Fading like the green in the field. Trust in Yahweh and do what is good. Make your home in the land and live in peace. 
Make Yahweh your only joy, and he will give you what your heart desires. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. The church is now called to worship. children. Now, as we celebrate your grace, may we be inspired and may we live here excited about living for you. This is our prayer as we anticipate your blessings. In the name of Jesus, let the people say, The affirmation of our faith comes to us from the fundamental beliefs number 25, the second coming of Christ. We will read it together. The coming of Christ is the blessed hope of the church, the grand climax of the gospel. The Savior's coming will be literal, personal, visible, and worldwide. When he returns, the righteous dead will be resurrected, and together with the righteous living, will be glorified and taken to heaven, but the unrighteous will die. The almost complete fulfillment of most lines of prophecy, together with the present condition of the world, indicates that Christ's coming is imminent. The time of that event has not been revealed, and we are therefore exhorted to be ready at all times. Amen. was a broken heart torn apart all oh, that solo all I had to give all I had to give was an empty hope and promises that's all I had to give but in return he gave me joy that could never be told and in return he gave me love that was more precious than gold so whatever you have to give you don't have to be ashamed just come as you are and presented in Jesus' name. For in return of a torn life, he'll give you life abundantly. And in return of the raging storm, the Lord will calm the sea. So whatever you have, the Lord has so much more. to give. Oh, if you were like me, you didn't have a 
lot of gold Position or money You didn't have wealth and told But I'm glad he didn't look on the things that I had But he looked at the things he was able to give me Return, he gave me love that was more precious, more precious than gold. And in return of a tour in life, he'll give you life abundantly. And in return of a raging storm, the Lord will calm the sea. So what do you Happy Sabbath Church. It's indeed a wonderful privilege for us to be here. It's a bit bleak and, you know, a bit cold on the outside, but it's 100% better than last week. Last week at this time, you look out, you could not see the wall across the road. So, you know, we are indeed grateful that we can be here today, worship God and to lift him lift up his name. Our first song we'll be singing is hymn number 334, Comes Our Fount of Every Blessing.
515. The Lord is my light. Hello. 
Will the deacons please take their position? This is just a paragraph from Council's Stroud Strip. The cause of God is very demanding. Industry is therefore required on the part of all, high and low, rich and poor, in order that due returns may be made to God, that there may be meat in my house, and that the servant whom he has called to do the work of communicating the truth to a perishing world may be supported. Let us pray. Almighty God who art in heaven, we come before you now to give you thanks and praise, mostly that we are alive. We thank thee for your many blessings, whereby we can return to you our tithes and our offering. Bless those who are able to give, and those who are not able to give, Lord, bless them still. And Father, as we go through this day, whatever we do may be done to your name and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the deacons please proceed. Not only does God require the tithe, but he requires that all we have be used to his glory. There may be no spendthrift habits. It is God's property that we are handling. Not one dollar nor shilling is our own. The squandering of money in luxurious deprive the poor of the means necessary to support them with food and clothing. That which is spent for the gratification of pride in dress and the building in furniture and decoration will relieve the distress of many wretched suffering families. God's trods are to minister to the needy. This is the fruit of pure and undefiled religion. The Lords condemn men for their selfish indulgence while their fellow beings are suffering for the wants of food and clothing. The Lord calls upon every one of his children to let heaven's light, the light of his own unselfish love, shine out amidst the darkness. If he see you acknowledge him as the possessor of yourself and all your possession, if he see you use your entrusted means as faithful strut, he will register your name in the book of heaven as a labor towards with him, a partner in his great firm, to work on his behalf of our fallen men, and joy will be yours in the final days. into the storehouse and I will prove to you this day say the Lord of hosts if I will not open up the, to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will receive may congregation please stand reading and it is taken from Ecclesiastic 12 verses 1 13 and 14 remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth 
while the evil days come not, nor the ears draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Last verse. For God shall bring every work into judgment, which every secret thinks, whether it be good or whether it be evil. These are the words of the Lord. special prayer, please come forward to the altar. Grant them responsive hearts and ears and minds to listen 
to what is being said here today. And if they haven't accepted you as their Lord and Savior as yet, may, the, may something said here this, during Sabbath school or during this divine service, or even while I'm here praying this prayer for them, it will move upon their hearts and it will help them to come to repentance before it is eternally too late. And Father, the visitors who are worshiping us, dear Holy Lord, who have accepted you, Father, please bless them. Lord, I present each family that is presented here bowing before your holy divine presence. Father, please take care of us. Lord, I remember, I pray for those of our family members who are not a part of this great movement. Children and brothers and sisters and spouses. Heavenly Father, please help us to live a life that is right and pleasing to your sight. So that, dear holy God, our non-believing family members, will see Jesus within us and come to know you and to accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Heavenly Father, I remember backsliding Israel. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, you're out in the world because of the cares and the pleasures of this life. They once walked with you, but they have gone back into their own wallow. But a marks of you, dear Holy God, that through the power of your divine Holy Spirit, that you'll help them to remember the first love that they have for you. Help them to remember the great sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for them when he went and demonstrated his everlasting and conditional love upon Calvary's cross. Heavenly Father, I pray for your man servant whom you have chosen to break unto us the living bread of life coming from your throne room above. Father, I ask that you'll speak through him to us, dear Father. Lord, give us responsive heart to listen and to hear. And may we apply this message which you have sent to us from your man's servant to our daily life of living. And may we go to our workplace and to our communities. We will share what we have learned so sinners will come to repentance. Father, I pray for this country, Jamaica, the crime and the violence. Father God, I ask you, Lord, that you'll take the gunman in charge. Yeah. Holy Spirit, dear loving Father, the gunmen are now planning to take down their next victim or victims. And it is only through the power of your divine Holy Spirit that you can stop the gunmen in their tracks yeah. and help them to remember that there's a God who's seen everything. And if they should die in their sin, dear loving Father, they're going to reap the, the eternal death. So I help the gunman, dear Holy Father, to remember that Jesus died for them. Help them to remember that Jesus loves them and Jesus cares for them. And that whosoever believeth in him you shall in no wise cast out. Amen. Bless the government, dear Lord Jesus. Take charge of the security forces, dear Lord, as they carry out their duty. Father, please help them. Please support them, dear Holy God. I pray and ask of you. Forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Pour down your Holy Spirit power upon us, dear loving Father. And fill us with your love, fill us with your joy, fill us with your peace. And help us, O oh Holy God, as we see your coming is drawing nigh. To come together in unity and to spread this wonderful three angels message. And let men know that Jesus saves, he redeems, and he's sanctified. Hear my supplications, dear Heavenly Father, and the things that I fail to ask of you now, my loving Redeemer, our Savior and our friend, please in your goodness, grant them unto us, as I say thanks, and ask them all in the mighty and powerful and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. Amen. Amen.
ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of ease and comfort, but where he stands in moments of trials and controversies. So spoke Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the person of whom, or the person who I will say just a short bit about, is a humble man of God. He hails from the East Jamaica Conference. He's a lover of people, one who wants to make heaven his home. He took very seriously the divine mandate which says it is not good for the man to be alone. And he went and he plucked a beautiful rose by the name of Monica. Sister Monica, we're happy to have you here. Please be recognized. Let the brethren see you. Can I hear you say amen for Sister Monica? Amen. amen. Pastor Merrick Walker currently serves as the executive secretary of the Jamaica Union Conference. Prior to that, he served in the East Jamaica Conference, and he has given outstanding leadership in the Seventh-day Adventist Church up to date. My good friend, my brother, and my mentor, welcome to the Band of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The members are waiting to hear a word from the Lord through you today. Just before he speaks, Brother Herbert Simpson, Jr. will minister on our behalf, after which Pastor Walker will bring the word from God. I'm being told, I'm being asked that Brother Rooms and Sister Rooms are with us. Brother and Sister Rooms? Oh, welcome, Brother Rooms. Welcome back. They were away for a little while. They're back with us. Welcome, and may God bless you all as you worship today. Amen. Oh 
Jesus, I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives, and because He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I know Life is worth the living just because He lives, and life is worth the living just because He heads together for prayer. To you, Lord, we come. We seek your guidance as each word is uttered. We seek your spirit in leading us into a higher spiritual experience. And when all is said and done, dear Father, may it be that we are more anchored in our faith and we are more excited about godliness. So use my feeble frame as your instrument of conveyance. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. On two hands, on the one hand, I thank the singer for providing the, the base for this message because it is all about Jesus. Secondly, I thank my friend, Pastor McLean and Sister McLean and the church leadership and membership for the privilege to share with you the Word of God. And I heard that the Mandeville Church is a church of amens and hallelujahs and praise the Lord. But I could be wrong. You tell me, am I right? Well, I will see if I'm right. You know, you have rumors and you have solid news. But I really heard that you like to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, because as the city church, you are a model church. And you like to praise the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. I would also like, and I so do, I bring you greetings from the leadership of the union and uh, congratulations because the Mandeville Church has been on the cutting edge. You don't know. The Mandeville Church is a church that is interested in mission. 
It's not a sit down, warm bent church, but it is a church that is interested in mission. Well, that's how we got it at the union office. And also, congratulations because you have been a faithful church in supporting the work of the Lord with your time, your talents, your own selves, in terms of your being models for the body temple, and your tithe and offerings. And we are really appreciative of the Mandeville Church and we are conveying our gratitude. Today, I speak to you briefly from the word of the Lord in relation to interpretation. We have and we heard a lot being said about hermeneutics, the approaches toward rightly interpreting the Bible. And I have seen a principle of hermeneutics known as the numerical principle or the arithmetic principle and it anchors that there is only one one there is the primary cause the number one he is alpha he is Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is unchangeable, immutable, all-powerful. There is only one one. God. And it is interesting to note how our young people are very brilliant today. How they retrieve, how they apply information, and right now we are celebrating the passes of our youngsters in the recently sat GSAT examination. And this weekend we have many persons graduating from high school, right up there. And a few weeks from now, we will have, from our tertiary institution, NCU, many of you will be graduating because you are able to remember. You are able to retrieve. And uh, the numerical principle of number is intricately bound and connected to the concept of retrieving that is remember remember and the bible has a lot to say about remembering and uh, remembering is really from the concept to count it's a numerical concept to count because when you count one, two, three, four, every one counts and every aspect matters and every person is an essential and every lesson is to be rooted and grounded in our spirituality. So remember is a numerical principle that I want to emphasize 
today. And it is said that Alzheimer's disease, the irreversible progressive brain disorder, destroying memory and thinking skills, it is one of the worst diseases. And hence, the Bible is rooted in the numerical principle to remember. And the first is, remember Lot's wife. Read it there in Luke 17 and verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. What is it about Lot's wife that we must remember? Lot's wife was exposed to the core leadership of the church. Lot's wife was exposed to the doctrines of the Bible then. Lot's wife enjoyed the privilege of worship and the status of belonging to the true church. Lot's wife, count, remember Lot's wife. And I believe that this message call to remember Lot's wife is very evident today as we examine where we are at in Earth's history. Look on every side, on every continent. Look within every ethnic group. Look within every community and every town in Jamaica land we love. And we are seeing here the tenacity of evil. We are seeing the decadence of standards. We are seeing evil on every side. And we are seeing in the church individuals falling away. The Bible says, remember Lot's wife. When our faces are set toward the kingdom of God, we must never, ever turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife got clear instructions that you should flee from the city. You should flee from evil. You should flee from corruption. You should flee from immorality. You should flee from your own doctrines and interpretation. And you will be saved. Lot's wife, yes, she left the city, but the city was still in her. And she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And the Bible says, remember Lot's wife. But that's not the remember that I really want to leave with you today. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1, 13, and 14, Remember your creator in the days of your youth. I must say to you today that as we look at the, the church carefully in Jamaica and uh, in the world, and we are just coming back from Asia where we looked at the church and we visited the church in a society that is not so friendly as our society. And we have seen the church in action. We have seen our young people taking leading roles in the church. Praise God. And to not today, I want to say Remember your creator 
count the essentials. And I want to encourage our young people to stand firm on the solid rock, Jesus, and on the principles of the Bible and uh, embrace it with the writing of the spirit of prophecy. Fuse them together and you will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So remember your creator. Count the blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon you. And I am using this context to let you know that as a union and as a church, we believe that we should invest in our young people in relation to Christian education. And that's why we have set in motion and we have discussed right across the field how we can provide more scholarships to our young people to enter our institution and uh, to matriculate to Northern Caribbean University where they will be rooted and grounded in the values of the Bible. That's a serious point. Because the world is changing. And secularism is on every side. I was in Paris about a year ago and I was discussing with some individuals the whole matter of the challenges around the world. And in fact, it was very appropriate because while I was there, there was a terrorist attack. And I didn't know where or near it was. And so I said my prayer, not knowing if that would be my final prayer. And I realized it was some uh, many miles away. And so I was talking to some young people about the crises of the world. And uh, we spoke for a while. And when uh, I said the solution to the crisis, these are found in the Bible. And the person said, I don't want to hear anything about the Bible. Because the world as it is, there is no God in charge. And the world is so secular in its nature and in its practice. And we are saying to each church, each member, each young person that we must invest in the foundation Christian education so that our leaders, our young people who become our leaders will not vacillate, but will stand on a firm footing. And it says, for God shall bring heavy work in the judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And let us hear now the conclusion of the whole matter Fear God and give glory to him. Yes. Let us hear and keep his commandment. That is. For this is the whole duty of man. But that's not the remember. I want to leave with you today. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath. Exodus 8 and verse 20. Remember the Sabbath day, the seventh day, to keep it holy. 
For six days you shall do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. And I praise God today that you are here worshiping God on the seventh day. And I didn't know that I would really in my own time see where individuals are saying that there is no seventh day, there is no Sabbath day, there is no commandment to keep the seventh day holy. But here we are. It is the last day. And uh, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 says that, know this, that in the last day, perilous time shall come. And Adventists don't sit at ease and believe that the world is as it used to be. The Lord has given us the signs. And we must study those and understand that as we see the tension building, from North Korea and as we feel on the world scene the aggression we must understand that our redemption draws nigh and the Bible says back to the text remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because it is going to be the test in the last days of the faith of many of God's children. But what we must endeavor to do is to keep the Sabbath as it ought to be kept. Understanding that we must prepare for it physically and spiritually and lay down our burdens so that when we come on the Sabbath day, we are rejuvenated to face the challenges ahead and we can truly say that I have been blessed and refreshed on this, the Sabbath day. But that's not the, remember, I really want to leave it to you. And I want you to note that of all of these, remember Lot's wife, remember your creator, remember the Sabbath day in uh, interpretation, what we mention and what many persons are talking about, hermeneutics, the binding hermeneutical principle of this is what is called a direct statement principle, whereby the Lord has made a direct statement and he wants you to understand it as it is. Remember Lot's wife because she looked back. Remember your creator because you will not always be young and agile and mind sharp to comprehend the gospel. And remember the Sabbath day because it is a literal day for the Lord made the heavens and earth in six days and he rested on the seventh day. Praise God we are here today because of that direct command. But you know, there is another remember in the Bible and turn with me to First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 11. I know you'll read it again next week. But it says here, verses 24 and 25. For when he had given thanks, 
he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And it says here, this do in remembrance of me. That's what the Bible says. In other words, we can study all the doctrines. We can sing all the songs. We can return all the tithes, rightly so, and give all the offering. We can march up to Mandeville or wherever we are in the world. And we can do all manner of good things for mission. And yes, we should. But if we forget what the Lord has done for me, then uh, it would worth nothing that I gain this whole world and lose my soul. It's all about Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know that set the Lord. It says this do in remembrance of me. And when people see us, they must see Jesus. When people hear us, they must hear Jesus. When people interact with us on the internet, they must see Jesus. It is all. And he says, do all in remembrance of me. You know, this is the fuller meaning that we must remember what the Lord has done for us, how he died on the cross for us. And Ellen White says that every Christian, every person, whether you be a believer or not will be greatly benefited and hence spiritually if every day we focus on a scene from the life of Jesus. So the numerical principle is that God he is first and every other thing depends on him. Only one number one, one head of the church, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. One of the most potent elements of intelligence is memory. Short-term memory is the working memory that helps us to get by every day. We have long-term memory. And listen now, where the brain system of storing, managing, retrieving information for application. And you ask me, it can be explicit, declaration requiring conscious thoughts. It can be implicit, not requiring conscious thoughts, because we are already set. So it's now deep within our value system that we are Every, everything about Jesus. But let me explain something to you. You know, you have the electrochemical signaling of information retrieving through our ears and eyes and our thinking. 
over and sending signals to over 100 billion neurons. Can you imagine what God has done? We are so wired that we can remember. Follow me. When you look at the 90 million volumes in the U.S. Library of Congress, it only occupy 10 terabytes in relation to space. 90 million volumes, 10 terabytes. But the Lord has wired us that we can remember and store up to 100 or 1,000 terabytes. 10 in the Library of Congress. But in our brain, we can store up to 100 terabytes. Why am I saying this? Because there will be no excuse for us to forget. No excuse. That we should have been crucified. We should have suffered and died. We were condemned forever. But Jesus, God's son, he took our place. No excuse up to 100,000 terabytes. Betrayed by Judas, who sold him for just 950 US dollars. We must not forget that he was betrayed in our place. 1,000 terabytes. We must not forget that he was abandoned by his followers. And I say to you today that there are serious days ahead for the Adventist church and Christians who will stand for right though the heavens fall. Serious days ahead. And we must not forget that Jesus was betrayed and he was abandoned for us. We must not forget that he carried the burden of sin of the world on our behalf. We must not forget that he was falsely accused and rejected by the Jewish leaders for us. And when our time comes, we must stand up and be counted. Because it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. We must not forget that he was mocked and abused by Roman gods on our behalf. We must not forget that he was crucified between two thieves on our behalf. Do not forget Jesus. He suffered physically and he died. But there are some things you might not know. You might not know that medical experts and historians and archaeologists having examined the details of the execution of Jesus concluded that it was at its worst but in the worst of time of crucifixion it was the best of time for redemption because mercy and justice met at the cross. Jesus could have said, I want to call 10,000 angels. But he died alone on the cross. You might not know that it was most grueling and painful form of capital punishment known to man 
the crucifixion. And I believe that many times we believe that we are in modern times and we are so comfortable in peace that we forget that we are here because of sacrifice. And hence, we must rise up and be counted because we are talking not only about total membership involvement in evangelism, but total membership care as we care for one another and be our brother's keepers so that the church will be what God wants it to be because he has paid by sacrifice for the church. Don't, don't, don't miss the point. You might not know that he suffered severe stress before the abuse began. The weight of the world was on his shoulder. He suffered agony on Mount Olive. That is, blood became, sweat became as blood. You might not know that he was tortured by beaten, beaten by the Jews, beaten by the Roman, Roman soldiers. So that fluid built up around his lungs and the crown of thorn on his head destroyed major nerves causing excruciating pain enough to kill him. You might not know that he was forced to carry a cross that he could not bear as a man. Remember that he could have called 10,000 angels but he died alone crucified naked among devilish insult the piercing of the median nerve of the hand with a nail caused incredible pain beyond the strength of morphine a burning pain like lightning bolt traversing the arm into the spinal cord and the foot and the plantar nerve excruciating pain he died for Adventists and he died for the world we remember Lot's wife we remember the Sabbath that's all right we remember our youth in that in, in our creator when we are young that's all right but let us remember that he died for us that we might have life and we might stand up with pride and be counted that I'm a child of the king. Do not forget. Dizziness and cramp and fever and modification, shame and hunger and thirst and traumatic shock from the injury, shock from the blood loss. Oh yes, he died not of the pain, but he died of a broken heart. And so then, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me in darkness without light? Remember, that's my challenge to you today. Don't let Jesus have to cry out because we behave like Lot's wife. My God, my God, why has she or he forsaken me when I need her or him most in this ultra modern time when there is immorality on every hand and there's a call who will go and who will stand up? Don't let the Lord cry out. Because 
we behave like Lot's wife. Don't let the Lord cry out because we forget our Creator. But let us and be counted. My God and I, let us be counted when the work days are called. Let us be counted when the marches are called to go uptown and to cry against evil. Don't wait until it is your time when you face the gunman. Let us together cry out now and remember our creator that he is in charge and he is number one and there is none like him. Don't let the Lord cry out, my God, why uh, have they forsaken me? Bear in the name, Adventists, but not play living by walking in line. I believe, I believe that there are serious times ahead. And Adventists must rise up and be counted. He says, remember the Sabbath. Don't join those who teach that there is no Sabbath. Because if there is no Sabbath, it means there is no creation. And if there is no creation, it means there is no God. And if there is no God, we can live as we want to live. But I praise God that there is a God. I know in whom I believe. He woke me up this morning. He set me on my way. And praise God, he has a people on whom he depends. There is a God. Don't forget. Don't drop out of the count. It's not time to drop out of the church. I tell you something. I was baptized as a young man in the church. And my parents were Baptists. And I became a member of the church in the late 70s and I tried to through Bible study and living win my parents to the truth and I tried for over 20 years they supported me in going to West Indies College, now Northern Caribbean University. I went to high school and I went to college. I became a pastor and I was pastoring. And then one day I got a message that I need to come home. Why do I need to come home? You need to come home because I want you to baptize me. And I baptized my mother. Praise God. And I went back home rejoicing. And uh, I got another call. You, got, you have to come back, my son. And I went back and I baptized my father. This is the church of God. The church is moving according to prophecy. And the devil will try to derail the church on the one side and on the other side. But I say, remember what God has done for you. And don't drop out. I found a poem. Ten little Christians came to church all on time. Mm. One fell out with one fell out, then there were nine. Don't drop out. Stay on board. Nine little Christians stayed up very late. One overslept.
Then there were eight. Don't drop out. Stay in the church. Eight little Christians on their way to heaven. One took the low road. Then there were seven. Preacher. Seven little Christians. Chirping like ticks. One didn't like the singing. Then there were six. Six little Christians seem very much alive. One took a vacation. Then there were five. Don't drop out. Five little Christians pulling up on heaven's shore. One took a rest. Then there were four. Four little Christians, each as busy as a bee. One hurt his feeling. Then there were three. Three little Christians couldn't decide what to do. One could not have his way. Then there were two. Do not drop out. When I were, was baptized and the preacher was leaving, the preacher said, let it be that when I see you again, you can say, I am still standing on the rock Christ Jesus. Don't drop out. And yes, four little Christians, four little Christians, three little Christians couldn't decide what to do. One couldn't have his way, then there were two, two little Christians. Listen, two little Christians. Each one, one more. One. Now they double their number, then there were four. And four little Christians worked early and late because the time is late. Each brought one, now there were eight. Eight little Christians very much assured in just seven weeks there were 1,024. Today I charge you the number one is God. Let us surrender to him and let us remember not just Lot's wife not just our creator when we are young. Not just the Sabbath day to come to church. But let us keep before us what the Lord has done for us. And if we so do, when the Lord comes, he will find us faithful. And he will say, well done. You remember me and I remember you. Together, let us walk hand in hand into my father's kingdom. Amen. Our closing hymn is number three, one, one. Jesus, that my 
dwelling of his Holy Spirit, I pledge right here, just put up your hands, you want to say I be like Jesus and those of you who are following us out there, just surrender your heart to Jesus. God bless you. Is there someone here not yet committed to the Lord and you want us to pray for you? I'm going to invite you just to come down right now, just come right down to the altar, right now, just come, come right down to the altar, not yet committed to the Lord and you want us to pray for you, come on down to the altar. Young people, children, others, just come on down right now. God bless you. Come on down. No delay. Just come on down to the altar. I want to be like Jesus. Walk with her right down. Come on down. Others, you might be upstairs. Children, not yet committed to the Lord. Just come on down. And we're going to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Please keep coming. Don't delay. Just come. Just come right up. God bless you. Walk with the children. That's a beautiful sign. They must remember their creator now. And we must not forget what the Lord, our Savior, has done for us. Come on down. Right? You're really come out, come, coming up. When you walk with Jesus, you're stepping up. So step up. For Jesus, step up for Jesus to a higher rung, rung of blessing, rung of his presence, rung of his protection. Come, come on up, come on up, come on up. Keep coming, I would be like Jesus. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Keep coming, keep coming, walk with someone, very good, keep coming. Keep coming. We're going to sing the last stanza in a little while, but walk with somebody. Come up. Step up. For Jesus. Praise Him. Another. Another. Upstairs, you can come. A, we're going to sing the last stanza now, and we're going to ask you to come at this point. Let's go. Surrender your life with us to the Lord. God bless you. They're still coming. They're still coming. Let's pray for them as they come. Somebody else is coming. Somebody else is coming. Person who is praying, stand right beside me. Person who is praying. Somebody else is coming. Very good. Very good. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Somebody else is coming. Somebody else loves the Lord enough to walk for him. Oh yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do.
Let us bow our heads of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, for all those who have received your words this afternoon with thanksgiving and have pledged by the grace of God that they want to be like Jesus. We ask that you will bless all those who are listening, all those who are following, all those who have tuned in. Help us all to tune in to your amazing grace. We thank you for those who have come to the altar. And we thank you for those who have surrendered their hearts wherever they are at this time. And hence, they are at the altar in another sense. We seek now your blessing because the time is serious and our redemption is nearer than we once believed. Accept, Lord, our worship today. Accept our response to your grace today. And may your divine presence rest, remain, and abide with us even as we contemplate living at a higher spiritual realm. Dismiss us now, and may your angels journey with us. Thank you for hearing, and thank you for blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessing we pray, as from thy worship we go always, guided life's goal.